again. Um, recently, a few people have asked me uh, about our orbital tools and uh, compared them with the tools in a program called Flame Painter, uh, which we are familiar with. Uh, we have not followed it since the initial release, but we are aware of what they're doing. We uh, we've had particle tools since uh, pretty much since the 90s, so. Um, always glad to hear other people finding uses for them. <laughs> We're, uh, we, we largely went the way of doing, uh, foliage painting and that kind of thing, and also smoke and fire and that kind of thing. But always interesting, interesting to see how other people take these tools and use them. So, it's, I was asked if we could use, uh, our tools in the same way as Flame Painter, and, uh, while there is some overlap, we're really not trying to duplicate what they've done. Um, we appreciate the innovation that these folks have injected into the uh, the industry. Um, but other, as I said, other, other than the overlap, we're really not duplicating the work. However, since uh, uh, since it was asked, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to duplicate or try to emulate emulate some uh, some things they've done. Um, I was asked why why do we see the uh, this these discrete uh, individual samples where flame painter has more smoother uh, less discrete looking well the answer is kind of simple we're a uh, eight bit per channel uh, paint program and flame painter is most likely working in floating point uh, and when you're eight bit per channel you only have two hundred 55 levels of uh, brightness to work to work with and things tend to when you're in additive they tend to add up very very quickly so you have to use fairly large large steps and uh, you know it comes out discreet looking well the solution to that is simply to um, work not in additive mode but use a couple of layers to get the results similar to working in additive so we're going to go ahead and pick uh, an interesting preset not sure which one Let's see, find something. Uh, let's find something that'll make a good nebula. Hmm. That's not bad. We'll try. I'm sure there's something, I know. The one called Just Colors will probably do it. Or Smooth Smear, maybe. Let's try this one. Ah, uh, that'll be good. Let's see. And the settings for orbicles are under the particle tool and the orbicle tab. Here you have a number of settings. Um, an important one here is the spring setting. This controls the, the latency of particles that uh, causes them to act more or less springy. As you see there, they don't directly form into a, a, a discrete shape like this, uh, this, uh, this plane that we have or this cylinder or these boxes or whatever it takes a while for them to form into that shape if we had less spring you'd see it more or less coherent all right so those are some of the settings we had to work with um, there are almost uh, there are other other things such as additive and uh, dynamic sizes and that sort of thing we're just going to use the speckle setting for now and as you can see, we're also using a gradient that controls the color, so we might pick a different color set to work with here. Oh, that's not too bad. So let's go ahead and use that. There's also some uh, color mix and color bleed that gives us different levels of blending and smearing. So those are useful to be aware of. Let's see. So I'm going to start with that anyways. And I'm going to just start painting a little more spring. There we go. Now I think I've got what I want. This color mix is really giving me what I want. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to just start painting here. As you can see, we're just sort of creating a, a nebulous shape. I'm going to add a layer, make this layer additive, and just start painting another one, and so on.
I might use some different gradient colors. Let's see. Until I built up this nebula, <coughs> excuse me, this <coughs> this nebula shape that I've wanted to create. Uh, there's a number of things we can do with this at this point. I'm going to go ahead and merge these. And there's some other tools we can use. I like to go through uh, some of these. Actually, a great tool here to use would be under brush and brush effects. This lets, lets us create some basic uh, lens flare like shapes. Let's see, I'm going to turn off that now and just go into a. Uh, I'm just going to turn this off. And I'll just have a normal brush at this point. I'm going to go into uh, brush settings. Might keep that around for later. And I'm going to change some of the parameter here's, parameters here, such as random size, random position. And as you can see, we're getting kind of a star shape. Uh, change these steps. Okay, because what's a what's a nebula without basically some uh, some stars and things in it? All right, there we go. Um, I'm going to use these in the additive mode as well. Let's see, additive and might make these also a little bit smaller as I go out into space because your nebula is where all your interesting space is going to be if we get into deeper space there's you know further distance between these these stars alright but um, everything so far we've done is additive um, but the interesting thing in space is, is some stars are brighter than the others and the stars that are less bright they, They'll be in front of other brighter stars and they'll actually look dark by comparison. So let's actually go into a different mode here let's go into matte mode and Let's see go into also uh, or sorry matte style and go back to default and now Let's use smear actually this will be even better here. We go. We can actually smear the colors on screen let me put the opacity up 100%. We'll put the size up some. And we're going to start smearing these colors around. You'll start to see darker colors being smeared in front of lighter colors. And it's going to start to look like you have all these, you know, relatively darker stars in front of this relatively bright background. And I'll change also the, uh, the step again. That way we can start to just make these bands of dark stars and it's actually a good way to uh, really distribute the light from these stars in your in your nebula uh, and once that's done it's still good to have a few hero stars right out in front so let me, let me go back to mode put that on additive again style keep it on matte and I'll just add a few hero stars back in whoops too many just a few because you don't want too many hero stores so they wouldn't be heroes all right so that is basically using some of our orbital tools to um get some nebula like effects and then adding some brushes and things in there to really uh knock it home and uh, uh that's really about all i've had to uh, say with this one so thanks for watching and uh thanks for using howler and ta-ta for now